Skins in League of Legends are a lot like ice cream. Ice cream. There's so many different flavors and variations. You often mix and match them together and add toppings to make every unique cone a fun and different experience. The cosmic skins are vanilla ice cream in a plastic container. Well structured, solidly made, visually passable, but oh so boring. Like you can't tell me any champion main would honestly say, hey, my character hasn't gotten a skin in a long time. You know what skin lane I'd want one from for them? The table scraps of Space Groove. The one cool thing at least is that Cosmic is one of the few skin lines with a story that has actually progressed over the years. During our last bout with Cosmic, we as players got to choose whether Lux beat the darkness inside of her or succumb to its madness. In the end, Darkstar won, the Cosmic Court was destroyed and now in 2023, the lone cosmic being Belveth is left to pick up the pieces. Imbuing mortals, she finds worthy enough to wield her power against the forces of capitalism. I mean Darkstar. Most of these I'm going to gloss over quite quickly. One, because they're pretty basic. Two, because they're hardly visually distinct from one another. But three, and most importantly, you guys already know which of these I want to talk about the most. So let's get it underway, shall we? Starting with Cosmic Matriarch Belveth. Talk about a monkey's paw. Imagine waiting over a year for your first pre-launch skin and it's... Fucking cosmic. I won't deny the subversion of Belveth being a good guy in this universe is neat, but that makes the monster form's existence even more confusing. But pretty much like all the champions in this universe, there's nothing special to distinguish this one from the rest of the cosmic lineup. In the wise words of Sojourner from Kai, At least it looks nice. Obsidian is the best chroma, 6 out of 10. Cosmic Paladin Scion. And here we see the start of the offshoot of the thematic the skin line introduced, Cosmic Paladin. Since they aren't pure cosmic beings, instead mortals imbued with cosmic powers, they're decidedly less cosmic. Scion most of all, and to be honest, he reminds me more of the Wildert exclusive Stargazer skin line. It's not bad, it's just kind of... Light. Like, come on, how cool would it have been if he turned into an actual comet when he ulted? Emerald is the best chroma because it makes him look like an orc. Orcs. 6 out of 10. Cosmic Paladin Nautilus. The whole Paladin part on this one is not very strong. Remove his red vest and he's indistinguishable from the cosmic skins of old. And while I don't particularly enjoy comparing older skins, I think Fright Knight Nautilus taught us pretty well that in his current stayed. Nautilus skins work best when his goofy proportions are used in favor of goofy skins. This one's okay, it's just a bit disappointing. Pearl is the best chroma, 5 out of 10. Cosmic Paladin Nunu. Out of all the Cosmic Paladins, the Stargazer influence bleeds through on this one the most, but I actually kind of like it. The colors are well balanced and with his already bizarre anatomy, Willump is pretty believable as a cosmic being. Though Nunu is a bit strange, because apparently they were both imbued with Belveth's power, despite Willump being the only one that looks the part. So Nunu's just a planet-sized normal child, I guess. It's probably the best of this new bunch. Not surprising considering when is a new new skin ever missed. Obsidian is the best chroma. 8 out of 10. Dark Cosmic Erasure Jin. Guys, I don't get it. What's the big deal? It's just an ordinary mythic chroma. Oh my goodness! What were they thinking? A small percentage of the player base were begging for rare and exclusive content. Okay, yeah. <coughs> Okay, yeah, sure, I guess we'll just ignore the fact that unique Zion Rakan duo recall animations were dropped for the exact same reason the shitty gacha system's existence is justified. And don't get me wrong, I am technically one of these whales who they speak of that wanted prestigious content. I own every single obtainable skin and then some. Having rare skins is a very cool feeling to have. When you earn it. Exclusive and rare content implies you had to actually do something to obtain it. Maybe this would be your reward for hitting 1 million mastery points on Jin. Maybe it costs 500,000 blue essence in the Emporium. Something that would make it feel special and, you know, rare. Because no, spending hundreds of dollars for the chance to get a digital cosmetic with an artificial drop rate that can change at any time like they did in TFT is not rarity. When I see someone using Black Alistar or King Ramus or Silver Kale, I think, yeah! That's a cool and retro skin. They must have been playing this game for a long time to own that. <laughs> but if I see anyone using Dark Erasure Jin, I'd only think, yeah. This idiot spent $200 on a recolor of a four-year-old skin. They must be pretty pathetic to think wasting their money like that somehow makes them look cool. This isn't prestigious, exclusive content, Riot. This is a paywall for people dumb enough to fork over their clearly not so hard-earned cash, or for people like me who already own every skin in the game and will be able to reroll into it in only a few months' time. People who own this skin aren't gonna be respected. They're going to be bullied. But that doesn't matter. The suits want to test how much money they can milk out of their player base so the devs are forced to not only defend this shitty system but take the blunt of the blame for it. It's actually 
disgusting. And sure, I might just be bitching about this like I do with a lot of things. And you just would stop bitching about it! But this entire system is a slippery slope. Yeah, sure, maybe it's just one $200 chroma now. But what happens if this succeeds and Riot decides to push that even further? What happens when they make one of your favorite champion? A new $200 FOMO skin every few weeks. The majority of new cosmetic content gets locked behind Gotcha. And most of the only remaining purchasable content is massively inflated in price for no other reason than they found out they could get away with it. That one they're already kind of doing. Dark Cosmic Erasure Gin is a new low for cosmetics in League of Legends. The suits at Riot should be ashamed of both themselves and what they've had to put the devs through to make this insult to their player base a reality. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You can't fucking stop me. I'm gonna fucking do it. It's a zero out of ten. It's fine though, right? I mean, it's all for a good cause. I'm sure Riot needs that money to pay for their mid-journey subscription. Overall, Cosmic's Return gets a 4 out of 10. There's one really nice skin here, but to be honest, I don't know what I even expected. They tried to do something a little different with the Cosmic Paladins, but some are so minorly influenced by that new idea, from a glance I can hardly tell them apart from the old skins. But those are my thoughts. What do you fellas think of Cosmic's Return? Perhaps unlike me, you're actually a big fan of the thematic, and you know what? More power to you. However, if you think Dark Cosmic Erasure Jin is good, or justified in any way, I will dismember your cranium from your cortex and throw you into the fiery pits of hell. Until next time though, fellas, let's hope literally nobody buys this shit so Riot never does it again and then I'll see you in the next video.